my dad, we may as well just set up a tent at the theater. <laughs> That's about right. Knowing the amount of mo- movies you and Akari go to up in bumfuck Alaska, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I wish so I had money. He's an amateur to compared to our family. <laughs> well, I because I work. I don't have enough free time to actually go until I have my two days off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us so, are doing more so important do my things. Parents. Some of us have more important things to do, like school. Anyway, work. hello everyone. Welcome back to the Legend Hunters podcast after three weeks of derping. Good lord. Well, I wouldn't say it's derping so much as there's just been so much shit that we've had to go through. <sighs> oh man. So, why don't we go ahead and... Like half of us being sick? (laughs) Or having to deal with bullshit at school. Or work. Or family. Yeah. Good lord. Or waiting for government processes to kick in. Anyway. What government processes? The one that's supposed to be helping me get a job. Not what I was implying, but let's go with that anyway. Anyway. Yeah, government process, yeah. Why don't we go ahead and start with talking about how our weeks have been with Mo- Moosey. Uh, it's been okay. There hasn't okay. really been, like, a ton going on, so... Finally feeling better from last week. That is good to hear. You've been sounding very much under the weather for the last few... I don't know. More like under the water, depending on how her throat was feeling. Uh, yeah. Depending on how my... Sinuses were being affected by the weather and the cold that I caught. <laughs> Alaskan colds sound dangerous and lethal. Yes, yes they are. <laughs> but now I've shared it, so the rest of my family knows my pain. <laughs> oh. oh god, it's a plague! It's spreading! A <laughs> uh, plague of shadows, you might say? Uh, more like a plague of gripes. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you feel like doing. So I spent most of my time playing Tales of Berseria. Ooh, me too. Right. What? Hey, I've beaten it. Me too. My turn! Will be later. Well, Alright, all right. so why don't, you, why don't you guys talk about Berseria then, since we're, you guys mentioned it. But please don't spoil it! Well, well, let's just say that you can pretend that Zisteria doesn't exist now. Yeah. This, cool. This it, it, was, it writes a game out of existence? You could just pretend it doesn't exist, because this is, like, so far... This story prequel. takes place a thousand years before Zisteria. There are characters in the game that are carried over into Zisteria, but you can just forget about that and pretend Zisteria never happened. What was that Because it movie? doesn't... This game doesn't rely on you ever having played the other one. In fact, most people don't know that there is another one. Thank that should tell you something. That is actually really cool. Yeah, and I'm going to say this. It was so good, and the stereo was so bad, it's now the topic of my next Divide by Zero script. Ooh, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, so I've already started working on the script for that. Expect major spoilers. Like big then I am not watching it for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Well, that's why me and Zero have had a separate window, just so we could, te- you know, talk about Berseria. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where all the Berseria talk's we, been happening. Or, yeah. Is, that way we don't spoil it for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, because of character names, character situations, plot, twists. Yes, this uh, game actually uh, has uh, plot uh, twists. Uh, how about you guys talk about the combat system? A lot better than uh, Zisteria. Because it's a lot more streamlined. You're not dealing with like merging your character with whoever you have paired with you. and yeah. Dealing with all of that. The whole you have ar- a party again. Yeah, you have a party again instead of the whole armatization <laughs> bullshit where you have two characters that you have to stay in the party at all time and then two characters you have to keep switching out between other two to fuse with. Which essentially means that you were only having a party of one or two. Party of two at the least. Party of four at the most if you had them unfused. It was you still but, get the party of four in this one, but that's standard for Tales games. You know, I have to say this. 
A lot of video game critics have always said that, you know, video games are simply not original anymore. There's no originality. But look at what has happened every single time, almost every single time, that they've tried to mess with game mechanics. It fucks up, and people don't like it. Exactly. So what do you want? And I but, will go ahead and say this. The final boss of Tales of Asteria was bullshit in the fact that you had to sacrifice those four elemental characters of fire, water, earth, and wind in order to defeat the final boss by staggering him out of his ultimate one-hit KO insta-death move, because if he fires that, it's game over. Well, so you're sacrificing the Avatar. Yeah, you're sacrificing each of your four uh, elemental party members. Pray to God you actually have the ability from each of the armatizations to actually do that. Otherwise, you're fucked. Bingo, like I was, and I just said, screw it, I'm just seeing an why ending could, on why YouTube. Why couldn't we have sacrificed the Shyamalan movie? Why could we not have sacrificed the Shyamalan movie? <laughs> because it, then we wouldn't have gotten a, a split, what is it called, the, the recent one that came out that was okay. Yeah, split. Split, no, no, no. there you go. Everybody needs to sacrifice the Shyamalan Avatar movie. <laughs> I, that I can willing to accept. <laughs> okay, the trauma. Okay, which one? Would, if we have to sacrifice one, do we sacrifice the Avatar movie, or do we sacrifice Dragon Ball Evolution? Ooh. The Avatar movie. No, Avatar. Dragon Ball Evolution. That was significantly worse. No, no, I can argue oh. why. Yeah, and anyway, another thing I should mention about Zysteria, its plot is basically the classic pilgrimage. Co Heroes call, basic bullshit. Wait, haven't we done a pilgrimage before? Yeah, like in Final Fantasy X, and it was done better because the characters actually... Oh, no, 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 you're going outside of the franchise. I'm talking, we've done pilgrimages in Tales games. Yeah, Symphonia. And, Fant and uh, Fantasia. Yeah. Oh my god, they were being Yeah, but those had a point behind them. Yeah, and in Symphonia, you broke away from the pilgrimage. Spoilers. Yeah. No, no, seriously, don't spoil the stuff in that game. Pilgrimages in those other games made sense. Yeah, they but, had a point to them. Yeah, but in Zysteria, there was no breaking away from the pilgrimage. You were just fulfilling a prophecy to the fucking letter. You know what it reminds me of? What? Final Fantasy Thirteen. Oh, that's the one the that I was thinking way. of. The whole way. Oh my <laughs> gosh. There's a lot of stuff in Final Fantasy Thirteen that I feel was repeated in... In uh, what was it? The, the one that shall not be named. Uh, I don't know. Thirteen is usually the one you shall not name. No, I mean I'm talking the game you're just talking about. Oh, Zysteria. Yeah, uh, the name doesn't even <laughs> stick with me. Zysteria. What is that phonetic, freaking pronunciation? It's just stupid. <laughs> Fun fact. It's, I actually did some like research on this. It, oh. they, they have to all end in IA. I know that, but the zest part of it is because. And this is true. The designers of this game thought that the characters were full of zest. They needed zest. They had zest before they meddled in it. In my... If you have to name your characters after a personality, then god damn it, you're not giving them personality. Done it wrong. <laughs> Let me go ahead and say this because this was in my original script for my top five worst RPGs. They have about as much zest as a slice of stale white bread. Salted. Yeah. Well, like Hang I on. told Unsalted. Sarah before, though, and he finally saw what I meant when he played it. Within the first hour of the game, I was 100% more invested in these characters than I was halfway through Zysteria. Yeah. There, there was a cutscene in the game between Rokuro the Samurai and Aizen the Pirate. Oh my god. I thought we were done with Bleach. <laughs> Trust me, this guy far, has far more personality. Actually, Aizen was an awesome personality. What are you talking about? Anyway. He was back when Bleach was actually good. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, the scene between them is at a bar. They are talking about why they chose to stick with Velvet, the main character, on her revenge quest. Because this is a revenge story. And they're just sitting there, talking about their reasons and stuff like that. All the while, Rokuro, the samurai, is having a drink from his sake bottle. And Aizen got himself a, a, a bottle of scotch to drink from. And during that conversation, 
Aizen hands over an, a glass of ice and pours Rokuro a glass of bourbon, and then he takes one of the sake cups from Rokuro and pours himself a drink. So they do an exchange of alcohols. Yes. Okay, first off, you're talking about a very, very meaningful interaction between two characters who are not the main. Yep. Second of all, you're talking about a cultural exchange being just happening between two of these characters from different backgrounds. And third, you're talking about alcohol in a Tales game, and it's not neutered. Yeah. This is amazing! Yeah, by the way, this game gets fucking dark. Of course, it's a Tales game. No, I mean, I mean, a Tales game done right. Yeah, a Tales game... It doesn't stop. Yeah, it doesn't stop being dark. But well, you are talking about a revenge story. It's... It would kind of... With very few exceptions, revenge stories don't turn out well. Well, it, it, the Fields train does not stop the second you get to a certain part in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, dear God. <laughs> and it goes all the way to the end. <laughs> yeah. I need to play right this now, game. Right now, though, I am so stuck on this after-game, you know, after, you know, post-game stuff because it's this long-ass dungeon. And it's got multiple parts to it. And there's a freaking time section where you have to beat, like, these certain sections of enemies within a certain amount of time. And I'm like... <laughs> Yeesh. That sounds bullshit. Anyway, I'm lending uh, Legend my Tales of Berseria to use. I... Um... And now we're gonna hear, Oh my god! Oh my god! This is the greatest game I've ever played in my life! <laughs> No, How you, guys, get you, this you guys are overreacting more than Markiplier does. <laughs> but anyway, I think... Ch it... ch channel your inner Chetronic, please. Let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, so anything else going on in your life, Muzi? Uh, still trying to get that stupid process going, so it's stressing me to hell out. Alright, I wish you good fortune. <laughs> Alright like, then. Ah! So I guess with no, that out of the way... Hmm. Well then, Akari, you want to give us your week then? Uh, or weeks, I should say. Not much has been happening with like with Lucy here. I really haven't been going as much because of my job and everything. Plus, right now I'm trying to take care of myself because I'm also sick, and so is my mother. Oh my god, it is a plague. And so here's the thing: I, I can take it with a grain of salt. My mom, she's been that Dan. She's been sleeping in her chair for the past couple days. Hey, that sucks. So, how yeah. far away are you from Raccoon City? Where you're like, Ugh. I mean, the only thing I have is congestion and stuffy nose and cough. That's pretty much it. I can handle that. Um, well, it is flu season, technically. I'm not gonna only hope that you all feel better soon. That's just like spring's come. That's the sign that spring is coming. How can there be a spring in a place that's covered perpetually in ice? It isn't perpetual. That's only for three to four months. <laughs> sure, it's only three to four months. You say that. And our desert landscape is always hot, even in the night. No. Yes, and the, in the winter, the it burns hot. Don't believe the bullshit you see on hot. TV and movies. That they completely exaggerate Alaska. Well, given it's our bullshit. given our winter this year, it's been fucking mild as fuck. Our temperature keeps going up and down. Same year. From what I've seen, it's got to go uh, even up What's anymore. What's the El Nina? Uh, La Nina year? I don't, last year? I don't know. I don't remember, but anyway, it was like it was like 80 one day. And then it was bumfuck 40 later. So, shorts weather. <laughs> yeah, pretty much for you all. It's shorts weather. <laughs> like, we'd be up there in your summer, and we would probably be in parkas. <laughs> That's how we can tell who the tourists are. <laughs> I'd at least be in two layers. At no, least. there will be groups that are there in, like, spring and fall. You can tell which ones are the tourists because they're in packs and they're all wearing the same color jacket. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, but you know what? I, I, it's going to be a lot harder if you guys came down to the desert to visit. Yeah. 
You can put on more layers to get warmer in the cold. You can you can only take so much off before you get a cease and desist from your local's finest. Depending on the temperature, might be worth it. <laughs> Man, I was I I'm used to going to trips in California where it's like 80, 90 degrees. I'm actually used to that kind of stuff. 89 is spring for us. Last summer. Except we normally hit the, we can hit 100 in the summer, Akari. And sometimes it can uh, last for a week. I in Cal- I was in San Diego years One ago. year, when my dad was being a mailman, when I was in, like, in 1991, the weather for El Paso in the summer was over 110 degrees for a month in length. It was that. bullshit. So, yeah. Oh, by the way, I think that year was also humid, so swamp coolers were bumfuck useless. Oh, yeah! Swamp coolers! That, that's a thing. It sucks. Yeah. Oh, God. But should we really be having a battle of the weathers? Because we, can we all not agree that our weathers are of such extremes that they are inherently bullshit? Yes, they are. Yeah, but right, right now you guys are winning, you know, feeling more comfortable because... <laughs> no, no, I'm actually used to this kind of weather. I'll be honest, I can't stand the cold. I really can't. We keep threatening to drag him up here in the winter. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We got this. We have a friend of, uh, was it Yami Moosey and I? We have a friend of ours in World of Warcraft who lives in California. When it's 50 above, he wears a heavy Starts coat. Starts complaining that it's cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we call him a wuss. Well, he is a wuss. Californians are wusses. Hey. <laughs> Shots fired at you're, California. You're not a Californian. Actually, fun fact, my dad was born in California. He's still not a Californian. <laughs> yeah, he's a Californian, the movie. Yeah, I, I was born in California, so was my mother. So, yes. <laughs> so, so Akari, I've got a question for you. Yes. How does it feel to say that you did what you did? Oh, yes. This is a little... I got official bragging rights for this. Yes. For the first time in my life, I am officially have beaten my very first, very first Souls game as of a couple, I think it was a f- uh, Thursday night. Yes. I have conquered Bloodborne from beginning to end, de- defeated all the bosses, and I will say is this, this game deserves to be in my top five for my all-time favorite games. Awesome. Really? That's awesome. Oh, I just love this game. I'm going through a new game plus at the moment to see if I can push myself again. And um, I'm about to... Uh, what you say? I'm about to go against the Bloodstar Beast again see if he can kick my ass again. By the way, Akari, try to do all of uh, Eileen the Crow's uh, quest on New Game Plus. Oh. oh, I'm going to have fun with that. I never I never got the chance to do that because I wasn't aware of it until I saw Vadi Vidya's video about her. So I'm like, how can I miss that? I'm like, okay, I need to go back and do that. Okay, so first off, with Heinrich, you need to let Eileen kill him. What you should do is just stun lock him with your gun. And stay the fuck away from him as best you can. Because Eileen needs to kill Heinrich. That should be our first clue to you. I think uh, from there we'll just let you take care of it. And we do have the rest of the podcast to go. Yeah, so I'm just going to say, enjoy a certain bird from a certain land yeah. on New Who Game Plus. Enjoy that? Who is bloody as hell. Yeah, he's a... <laughs> he's bloodier than a freaking... I, I don't actually do not know how many times we died to him. I'm actually going to put a kill counter on that. Please he's bloodier do. than a rare state, guys. Bloodier than a rare steak fresh off the animal. Bloodier than a serial killer's basement. Bloodier than my ass after fighting him. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he give you hemorrhoids? Uh, no, God, don't With go the there. stress from it, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> he was uh, li- uh, almost uh, literal you, pain. You, you call me out for making certain jokes, sir? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I do gross out humor. I don't do sexual humor. This kind of what? Is. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how's your week, Leo? Um, my week's been interesting. I got my hands onto Neo. Neo? Oh, ah, boy. Neo. Yes. And I got 
would say that the soul. I can understand why there's a lot of souls comparisons, but it's it, it's only soulsian in sort of the um, in the progression and how you manage stamina. They make a lot of they make a lot of adjustments. The biggest being that um, this isn't a stats heavy game. Really? So it's a skills this is not, heavy game. Well, you still need to use stats because that you can't use certain. You can wear certain armors, but you won't get all their full abilities if you don't meet the minimum um, uh, stat requirement. Hmm. And certain weapons scale better with different stats, but almost all of your stats will have some weapon behind it. Level health, you get to use spears better. Level your strength, you get to use heavy weapons better. Uh, upgrade your skill, you can use uh, light, uh, more uh, lighter weapons better. So it has so it has a lot of other things in it as well as the ninjutsu and uh, onryo magic stuff that basically enhances how what items you use at the start. So onryo magic has some has a lot of buff and debuff properties and basically replaces spells. And ninjutsu uses a lot of item shenanigans as well as poison and shurikens with uh, fire bombs too. Okay. All right. Um, um, there's the living weapon system, which basically gives you a super that doubles also as your, uh, as your soul marker if you die. So it, it, ma it makes it much more punishing to get back if you die early, but, uh, you also have the option to go into a super mode that makes you invulnerable and, uh, replenishes per kills, which can be very useful to power through certain last minute areas or to, uh, finish off a boss. I'd like to note that this actually sounds a lot more like a Bayonetta game as opposed to a uh, Dark Souls game. Which is where I was getting at. It, it's very much more of a character action game, especially when you consider that uh, Team Ninja was also behind uh, Ninja Gaiden. So it's very much like, it's very much Ninja Gaiden inspired Dark Souls. Okay. So, and Ninja Gaiden's kind of beat your ass into the ground hard. Yeah, it's not really I, I've never played it, but it's very, again, it's a character action game like Bayonetta. Um, one of the biggest things that you're going to have to get used to is that you have three different fighting stances uh, when you when you fight. You have high, mid, and low. And in it, and when you attack in a certain stance, it alters two main properties for the majority. It alters your move, your dash speed, and it alters your attack power. High stance will give you higher attacks. But you do a fat roll as your dodge. Okay. So I take mid stance, a mid stance does normal swings, normal power, and but you get a dash and then a, and a tuck and roll. And then, and then the finally low, low stance gives you a lot of attacks, but it uh, reduces the power. Right, and you and you also get further distance on your dash and roll when you use it. Okay. You know this likewise, idea? Uh, likewise, low stance has faster has the fastest attacks, and high stance has um has the slowest attacks. So, you know what this reminds me of? This actually reminds me of the weapon swapping mechanics in most of the Souls games. Just the fact that you're altering your attack pattern by swapping weapons, but in this case, you're just changing the way you hold it. It's an interesting take kind on of. the mechanic. Yes, it is. Um, also, you can also every weapon, every weapon uh, family has a tree that devotes skills to it. So, for example, the uh, regular shorts, the regular uh, katana, you have the Eito strike, the sheath and slash. Okay. Uh, as your sort of default stance with uh, dual swords, you get multiple attacks, uh, special like rush rush combos. Uh, Kusari Gama can pull enemies in close and knee them, and let you knee them to put them into a vulnerable state. I've heard that there is basically this one thing that you want on all your characters, and that is the stomp. Um, there is a... I'm trying to remember which one it is. Um, stomp, I don't remember. It, oh, well, essentially, yeah. there's a sort of guard-breaking or, like, yes. disrupting yeah, the move. Kick. The kick. Yeah, the kick. That's what it's called, kick. Excuse me, yeah, I don't know the terminology of this game very as, as, a, as a starting attack. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, it, but 
certain ones like that and the key pulse are universal. Yeah, I remember so the, the key looking at the key pulse and just thinking, holy shit, my god, I can actually recover my stamina in one shot after attacking. Well, it's an active reload, so you have to hit a button after you finish the attack combo when you're when you're when the stamina that you use uh, slightly recovers and you time it right, you'll get it fully back. And it also dispels some uh, a debuff that tougher enemies will generate later in the game. It's very important and very useful. And later on, you can add in other abilities that let you do key pulse when you roll and key pulse when you switch stances. Hmm. Okay then. But basically, all this does is it keeps the momentum, so that way you can pull off stupidly awesome combos. That is absolutely cool. Now, one of the biggest changes to the to that that uh, Neo has is that upgrading weapons is a bit of a bear. Really? You upgrade weapons with other weapons. That would explain why so many of them drop. Yeah, so there's no resource, there's no item resources, you just, um, what you gotta do is you gotta go ahead and beat someone up, uh, you get, raise, you, you can get familiarity with your weapons, which makes them much easier to use, and then you can break them down and fuse them with other weapons to make those weapons improved. There is a form mechanic that I would like to ask you. Yes. Is there a PvP like in Dark Souls? Okay, so the PvP... <laughs> the PvP works when you die. Ah, uh, so you fight... I, I heard about that. Uh, you don't invade other worlds, right? No, you, you fight you fight NPC-generated copies of whatever enemy... whatever pe someone had for their, ar for their armor set. Okay. That... So, like, say someone... So, so like, say you died around a hilly area. In someone else's game, your tomb marker will show up in there, and they can check and they can see generally what you have equipped in terms of rarity of your armor and the kind of weapon you have. But you're and not allowed to play uh, with other people unless it's with their avatars. Well, you can you can you can bring in people for co-op, but it's it's different. But back to the back to the rival thing. Um, that one you all. That one, what you do is you summon people in, and um, you summon people in. You fight them. They drop one piece of their equipment on at random, and then that's it. If you want a co-op, you can do that as part of the at at your bonfires, but you can only co-op with people who've already beaten the level. Okay. Which means you can't progress with someone. Um, Unless they're ahead style, of like you. you do, like you do in Souls. Uh, it's kind of a butt to do it that way, in fact. That's weird. I was a little bit afraid of that. The combat mechanics sound awesome, and the game's style and history are pretty cool, too. Now, that, that, now that being said, there is a co-op mode. I just haven't played with it yet, so I don't know. I, I would have to go ahead and take a look at it and see what the options are for there. Alright. So... Um, I'm going to go guys. ahead and move us along a little bit. I, I know you want to keep gushing about Neo, but yeah. I haven't heard from Zero yet on this one. Well, I'm well, not... Well, Zero, there's a reason why, Zero. Go ahead. I'm really not all that interested in Neo. It's too fucking weebish for me. Didn't you Man, pick might... the Muramasa in Dark Cloud? Yeah. Bite me. Ow. But yeah, I know what I know that I'm a weeb sometimes. But my issue is that it's just too. It looks like it's pandering almost to me. I mean, to be fair, there's some historical context to it. Uh, well, there was a William who existed, and he in, he did in fact establish trade routes with um, Japan. As a matter of fact, he even met in person with freaking Tokugawa himself. Neat. You know, the one who actually is 
the one who finished unifying Japan and is probably one of the great shoguns to ever live. Hmm. Go figure. They do make a they do make a lot of nice lore um, for these for the less notable actors in Japan as well, and you encounter very early on Hanzo Hattori too. So holy shit, you can you meet freaking Hanzo. In fact, Hanzo is your ninja tutor if you want to learn to do all the ninja stuff. Seriously? Yes. Yeah. Learning from the great himself. Okay. If not, I know that the PvP is not really there, but I will say that it seems the lore and just everything about this game does seem like it'd be a really interesting take. And I am a huge fan of Japanese mythology. And I've been trying to study more of it, so this might give you a few ideas of where to go in terms of finding out more. Um, on a last note, the pacing is much is it's fast but not overly fast, so somewhere in between Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne. Oh really? So in terms of the speed, so you get so you you, you can still block, but there's no shields. So if you take a hit, you're going to take some damage, but better than taking full hits. You can very easily die in five hits to an opponent if you don't keep your timing up. Interesting. So, that sounds about par for the course, and honestly, makes sense for uh, combat. Dark Souls was always really ruthless because it did have the element of realism in that if you fight a whole bunch of dudes and they all hit you at the same time, you're going to oh, yeah, die. You're, you're going to get boned. Um, last note, the intro stage in, um, for Neo is page for page ripped out of Dark Souls 1. Really? You start in a giant castle, and a big horking dude with an axe is your, is your, is your intro boss. But do you fight him and learn just how powerless you are before you fight him again with better weapons? I, um, no, no, I said Dark Souls, not Demon Souls. Yeah, I said Dark Souls. And that is Dark Souls. You don't fight the big dude until you get your weapons back. Except they, except they don't do it that roundabout for plot reasons. So you actually don't find the boss until the end. All right. Okay. Um, other than that, a um, little bit of Dark Souls 2 because the Drangleic event that's going on. By the way, there's a Drangleic event going on. Yeah, uh, I've been currently playing it while we've been doing the podcast, just practicing with my with my character. Stop leveling your character already! We are going, you are going to outstrip us, and you will not be able to co-op with us at all. You're already two tiers up, and this is not a laughing matter. God damn it, zero! I, I'm not even mad at you for the grinding. I'm mad at you for outstripping us so that. You're going to be on your own. We are not going deep to help breath. you. Deep breath. You get no help from us. Deep breath. You're I'm only here. hurting yourself. I'm laughing at this, man. The only time I think I'm going to need your guys' help is when I'm going to be fighting Sir Alon. Good luck, because we're not helping you. Nah. You're go we're, all, we're going to be so far behind that you're just not going to be there. And then the event's going to be over and no one's going back. Yeah. Well, ah, the, um, that's, that's basically what I've been up to is either Dark Souls or... Um, Neo. Or Neo. Um, definitely looking forward to seeing For Honor when it comes out. I've been watching a lot of videos for that. Good lord, the salt coming off of those video uh, Off of that game is just insane. Get out of my swamp! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about how my week has been. Please do! Which actually hasn't been a lot, to be honest. I've been doing... I did commissions, I did art... did some of my own personal artwork. I've been playing a lot of games recently. I was playing Dragon Quest VIII for the longest time. Tales of Versailles. Tales of Versailles. Where, where are you in Dragon Quest VIII, Zero? Dragon Quest VIII. I'm at the Godburn Imperia, and by the way, they buffed her in this get in this version. No! Uh oh. They gave her Kafuddle. No! She was annoying before. Now she causes confusion on all your party members. No. So what I had to do now is grind for rings that will basically negate confusion. 
I am so happy that they sped up the combat for that game. They sped up the combat, which is great, but they not only gave the God Bird Imperia a kafuddle uh, move, they also boosted her HP, and she already had ungodly defenses. It's like they wanted to make that a perfect roadblock. Hey, Zero. Yeah? Imagine if they buffed the Dragovian Lord. I've never fought him. Guess what you have to do to get the secret ending. I know. Once I beat the game the first time, I didn't go and do the Dragovian thing. I was too t tired after that. <laughs> well, now you were going to. Yeah, provided I remember to go I, back to it. I eagerly... Well, you gotta go back. You gotta get the best ending. I've seen the best ending on YouTube. No, but you gotta earn it. Yeah. You gotta feel it. Art thou feeling it, Mr. Krabs? The fuck? You, you've never seen that skit before? Maybe. I don't remember Spongebob. Uh, uh, I, 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 will send you, I will send you the meme afterwards. Uh, Alright. Um, I think that uh, Is there anything else with your week, what, uh, Zero? Um, other than I've been playing Dark Souls 2 now, since I just beat Berseria, not much else. Uh, so, Legend, your week. Back to Legend. Alright, first up, I'm gonna get this out of the way. I've been dealing with a lot of shit. Hmm. Just a lot of shit. Yeah. My grandfather fell, which, hmm. which means everything you think it means... He's not dead, but he's he's in he's been hurting. Mm. So it's it, he we've all been very very much keeping an eye on him, uh, and that's been you know it's it's something that sticks with you on your mind. But if I'm not visiting with him, uh, going to school, not been able to go to work, which is actually a bad thing. No puppies to train. There were no puppies to train for about three to four weeks. Aww. I only got to work yesterday Yeesh. at the time of this recording. So it, it's been rough. And, of course, in school, I managed to get the highest grade of the class, which was still a failing grade on this test. The dude is Japanese. His English is unbelievable. Sounds like he just got off the boat, doesn't it? He didn't just get off the boat. He was... He arrived via boat. <laughs> oh, by He's been in this country. He has been in this country since the time that people came to it on boats. So, guys, it sounds like it's contradicting yourself, then. Well, he's his. I wouldn't say that it's fresh off the boat because it technically isn't, but it's the accent might as well be. And so this is how you see the colonies. They became... He sounds exactly like that. Was it what your teacher's Mako? Worse! <laughs> oh! Oh, by the way... He's shameful display, man! <laughs> from Shoga... From Total War 2. He sounds like that guy. <laughs> Our men are fleeing from the battlefield! Shameful display! I have never seen that game, but now I need to. <laughs> you should. It, it's got a lot of memes behind it. But he sounds like that, and we're trying to learn American history from it. This is a horse. It, it, it's a turkey shoot. And we're the turkeys. Well, here's the thing. If he wants to keep his job, he's either going to have to drop that exam or... Curve the, the exam. I say he's actually a very good professor, just because I can actually understand English. <laughs> because, yes, Zero, <laughs> I am <laughs> weeb trash. <laughs> hey, I didn't say I wasn't either. No, no, you just said it was too weeb. Yeah, if it's too weeb for a weeb like me. <laughs> if it's too weeb for a weeb like me, it's too weeb. I'd say it's all for us. It's amazingly fascinating. But anyway, so I'm dealing with that. And surprisingly, I am actually still having a lot of fun. I knew why I failed, so I'm already taking the steps to do what I need to do. But in terms of video gaming, in terms of what I have been doing for the last few... Bloodborne? Bloodborne. I needed to train. It did not help at the end. 
God, no, because I took care of Lady Maria, I took care of the Orphan of Cost, and I took care of Lawrence. Spoilers! By the way, we're that far into the game now. We are just being... We're almost done with Bloodborne. We have done all the DLC. Our next step is to take care of the Chalice Dungeons before taking on Murgo. Yeah, we've got such a ridiculous backlog. Uh, you told me that you were considering possibly doing a everyday thing, right? Like a, like a Monday through Friday upload once we finish it. I am actually all for that. Yeah, because I'm a, I, I did too. I've recorded up to episode 34 now. We're barely uploading episode 9 on Monday. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's also the, episode, the last episode that Leo's a part of. Mm-hmm. There is another thing that I was I've been curious doing. about. Oh. That are you ever thinking about doing longer episodes? Longer episodes. Um, hmm. The thing about the longer episodes has been that uh, uh, it's like we talked about how our mic was fucking us over at one point, and we found out that the reason for that was that we recorded the um, Fortune Streets all in one take. Yeah. And it would it would screw up about the hour mark. But mm. we but when we. But when we segment it out at our half-hour episodes, it doesn't seem to have those issues. And just to be on the safe bet, I've stopped using it entirely for our Let's Play. So if you notice a hum in the background from the motor of my, from the fan of my laptop, that's what you're hearing. So we're sorry about that, but quite frankly, we just, our mic was, it betrayed us. It backstabbed us. $30 down the drain. What the fuck? It, it could be much worse. It could be $100 down the drain. Yeah, that's I very think true. I think, however, and the thing is, I, can't, I really can't afford to buy a new mic because we're not making money off this series. We're not making money off of YouTube. I've done a whole bullshit rant about this already on my last Divide by Zero. This is a hobby. This is a, this, this is, is a, this is, this is a, an expensive hobby. This is a hobby for you and Leo. This is a full-time job for me, so fuck oh. you. Uh, okay, with that little bit of uh, rage out of the way, why don't we get into our news? Finally! Agreed. Agreed. Alright. So, biggest news out of the gate, Pokemon Go finally released Generation 2. So you can now catch your furrets, not furrets, you can now catch your centrets alongside your rattatas. Yep. And dittos. So you can catch furrets out in the wild. Oh, you can catch birds out in the wild. Sweetness. Yes. I kind of snuggle into the go. ground bowl. Although However, it's not that many candies to evolve a centric, so. Now, let me ask Are they including the new type? So is Snubble a fairy type? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they included I, I, the fairy I, I, type I, since uh, Gen 1. I mean, I, yep. I, I, I figure. I, I didn't think about it about Clefairy and Clefable, but I just wanted to ask just to be clear. Oh, yeah, they've had Jigglypuff and Clefairy in them. As fairy from the beginning. Okay, okay. That way they didn't have to worry about programming it in later because everybody already associates them with those types. So. Yeah, gotcha. Just figure, you know, there's a lot of the old guard who says, "What the fuck is a fairy type?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's funny. Oh yeah. So, anyway, that's so out. Yeah, so now Gen Two is released. Yeah, I feel like I it should have been released a lot sooner to keep po people get more invested in Pokemon Go. But I think that it was good that they released it later, just because of the fact that more people connect with Gen 1 just because they dropped off after Gen 1. They also gave us two events to prepare for the release of Gen 2. Everybody's like, oh, well, these events aren't going to do anything. We want Gen 2. They gave us a starter event. So those of us who hadn't had a chance to get the full evolution line got a chance before Gen 2. They gave us a pink Pokemon one, and everybody's like, well, why a pink Pokemon one? I know it's Valentine's Day. Because you need um, Chansey Candy and Porygon Candy to get their evolved forms. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then they, 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 they also they did the babies as well. Very well thought out, huh? Mm -hmm. So it may have taken them a while, but they got it out there, and this time, the release was smoother, because the game is already out everywhere that it's going to be out. And they, they were, were prepared, because mm -hmm. they've been spending this entire time building up their servers, so they wouldn't have the same issue they had when it first released. <laughs> it was a little bit iffy for the first hour and a half 
mostly because everybody was on there the second Gen 2 launched. But once they compensated for that, it's been smooth. And that is good. So, I also hear that they've been... You said that they were doing uh, events. Uh, I heard that there was something about bottle caps. Yes, so they also have an event for the main Pokemon games offering a bottle cap for everyone who has a mystery gift. I don't get the thing with bottle caps at all. I honestly didn't. It's never got for hyper it. training. Zero, do you want to explain? Uh, I haven't been keeping up with... Uh, bottle caps, let's see. What bottle caps do is that they basically... Turn a Pokemon's IV stat to 31. Maxes it out, basically. That sounds... It, really does, it, do, awesome. it doesn't alter it for the purposes of breeding, but for, for competitive battling, you don't need to go ahead and breed stupidly fat, stupidly uh, uh, incredible amounts of Pokemon to get the perfect EVs on it for competitive play. So if you just breed for your, per for your shiny Pokemon... You could give it a bottle cap to boost its stats that it's, it's crappy with. Or a golden bottle cap boosts them all to the 31. Well. Yep. But those are extremely rare, and bottle caps are pretty rare as well. You can get them from the Poke Pelago from the mining thing. But, but, they're, oh yeah. but they're incredibly rare. Incredibly rare, and you can also fish for them. Well, what? not too long after the game, people figured out how to get a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out uh, a, pl a way to get them. Well, if there a bunch of players have done it already, then they probably posted it, their cheats online. Either their cheats or their methods to do it legitly. Um, like I said, they're cheats. <laughs> <laughs> they're abusing the their game. The words are pointless. Yeah. Pretty much. But hey, if you ever want... At least, you know what, I'm kind of happy with that because IV breeding and uh, X and Y was alright, but... But it wasn't an expedient process, and honestly, it led to a lot of orphans. Yeah, a lot of orphans in it's the... It's bullshit? It's, yeah, it's well, a bullshit. Well, it, well and then with, with the GT, with the mystery gift being so popular, it just became a giant round of pass the buck. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. With the, with the mystery transfer. Oh, uh, yeah. Wonder Trade. Wonder Trade. Wonder Trade, thank you. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. I, I, you knew what I meant. Mystery gift is I, what I've Game been addicted to Wonder Trade for ages since oh, absolutely. Y came out. And, and, and then when you go to your mystery bank, you have like oodles of miles to use. Mm -hmm. So it's like awesome in that regard as well. Mm -hmm. Something not so awesome, though. Uh, you gotta okay. watch what you say, apparently. Because, you know. All right. I know it's been covered before, but we have to cover it anyway because it's part of the news. Uh, PewDiePie gets dumped over 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 his joke. I can't. Oh also talk to boy! Them. I actually saw Matt Pat's video explaining exactly what PewDiePie did, and I kind of agree with Matt Pat for once. What PewDiePie did wasn't a joke. There was no punchline. There was not funny. Okay, okay, before we get into that, yeah. uh, Akari, why don't you go ahead and explain, in, in your words, what happened with our dear friend, uh, Felix. Okay, um, what he, Felix did, he did a video on a website called Fiverr, which is basically you pay somebody to do a, a video with instructions you sent to them. And overall, he did two videos, uh, one with a, a Jesus lookalike saying, oh, that Hitler wasn't that bad, and... He did another video, which he thought that never wasn't going to be done at all. He thought it was going to be, you know, blown over. But it was these two guys from India, kind of like, just, I don't know what they were on, like laughing gas or something. No, they but were they're laughing. They were. And they're uns uh, yeah, go ahead. I know it was going on in that video. They were paid to dance around in hula outfits, holding up a sign. That's their. Yep. That's their. That's their thing. Is what. It, that's what they did. Is their thing. Yep. They, yeah, but the know, problem is they had, and crap. they had such a horrible understanding of the English language, they, they didn't even know what the hell they were writing. Exactly. Oh, they knew what they were writing. No, they didn't. They knew they exactly actually... what they were writing. They admitted it. That's how they got their account reestablished, hmm. is they sent in an apology. Well, they had to, otherwise they would have been fucked, because they live in a part of India where most people are only making less than a dollar a day. Pretty much. So, 
pretty much, yeah, it, and this was like over back in January, and all of a sudden, so I'm like, really? It takes him this long to find out about this whole thing? Well, and the, basically, he got severed from Maker Studios, which I've heard from all other YouTubers that Maker Studios is not really the best person to be partners with. And not only the fact of that, YouTube canceled his, his the second season of his YouTube series, uh, Scare PewDiePie, which is I'll, kind of I'll give him one thing on that, is that he wasn't upset that they canceled it. He was upset that people were losing their jobs because they canceled it. Exactly, because the fact there were other YouTubers like Ken, Mark, and Jack saying, you know, even Jack said, like, I'm not a big fan of what Felix said. I don't like what he said. He did deserve the consequences of his actions, but I, again, he's my best friend, and I understand what he's trying to do at times. And a lot of people were going after Jack saying, oh, you're stabbing PewDiePie in the back. I'm like, no, he's not. He's saying what he what he felt. He doesn't. He, well, he, he was, ups he was even upset PewDiePie about PewDiePie came out and said, I, I get that my friends, you know, they don't like some of what I said. So he's not mad at Jack for saying what he felt. Yeah, and the problem is that I have with this is that PewDiePie has an audience of over 50 million people. He really needs to realize what he's saying reaches so many goddamn people, and it can have such a disastrous effect. He well, needs to be more careful with what he says, and I have a feeling at this point he's not going to have a choice. Yeah, I will say this, because that... Because YouTube can't demonetize his videos because he's not breaking any rules that way, yep. so he'll still be making an income. However, he's going to have to be careful what he says from now on. A lot of... I, I'll because say this if he's about... not... People will stop watching. I'll say this about PewDiePie, and that is that for the longest time, he's been all about shock humor. And it worked for him. It was very much a big part of his staple comedy routine. And whether or not that's a, your thing, it's up to you. But with his type of humor, it was only a matter of time before he was going to cross a line. And I'm just sorry that it had to happen. That it did happen. Because, as I agree with Jack, he's a stand-up guy. Uh, regardless of what he says, his intentions were, for the most part... Uh, he wasn't... He isn't an anti-Semitist. He doesn't hate people. He just said something that really rush. He... That he... I believe Jack said it best. Uh, it, he, he tried said, to make his point the wrong way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is, is pretty much what Jack said. Is I get the point he was trying to make. He just did it the wrong way. And even, you know, even Felix now is like, I get that I crossed the line. And I'm sorry that I did. <laughs> and not just because of, you know, what happened. But he gets that he's crossed the line. Exactly with that, and but what's really infuriating is the fact that the media goes, uh, ape, you know, cherry picking like he said, just picking out all the bad stuff and leaving the more important details out of the story. Mm -hmm. Yep. But what and, gets me is that all of this stuff happened like over a month ago. The yes. only reason that things are just now happening is the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they had a trigger reaction to it because they actually pressured Disney and YouTube. They had no choice but to do something because Wall Street Journal would not let up on them. And Wall Street Journal's kind of been, you know, backstabbing Felix for a while. It seems. Oh yeah, they they like, haven't liked agenda. him. You know why, right? Why? Because these days, um, online. You know, stars like him and Mark and, you know, and all of them, they have more of a voice than, you yeah. know, things that have been around longer like Wall Street Journal. They don't like that. Oh, That's yeah. cutting into their profit margin. Well, yeah, because the YouTubers are actually being honest about it. He's pull, he's a, He actually pulled up some graphs. He did his research. He pulled up some graphs. And their profit margin actually started to go up when they started posting these stories because they're putting his name in it, and so people are like, oh, well, I want to read that. Like, so how much saying, money what, what is you, this What you're implying is that there's an ulterior motive to the story being leaked. Yep. 
Absolutely. Um, I've been noticing that trend with all sources of media, regardless of political standings. Quite frankly, news is starting to die. In a sense, yes. It's, it's how they do it that's starting to die, because people are getting sick of you know, clickbait news headlines. Yeah, people are sick of the false advertising of news articles and stuff like that. And unless some of these newspapers and journals and news coverage sites get their act in gear, people aren't going to listen to them, even if they're telling the truth. Well, what got me is one of the news stories they did on him, the person who wrote it a day later changed the title of the article online. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yes. So what was it before and what did he change it to? Or she changed it to? Oh, good lord. It had something to do with him being, you know, anti-Semitic and all of this. And then the next day, it said um, something about PewDiePie. And she changed the, the second half of it to learn the impact of LOL JK or something like that. Oh, hmm. yeah. Speaking of JK, even JK Rowling went after him. The funny part is, even diehard fans of her, because of how she put it, they dug into her. <laughs> yeah, they did. They tore her a new one. She, call, she called him a fascist. Wow. Does she even and know who he is? They dug into her so bad. Did she apologize for it, or did she just not? No, no, oh, she no. just left it that one tweet. Well, I'm not surprised. It was how she did it that they dug into her about, not who she did it about. You know, to be honest, I'm not surprised. J.K. Rowling is a woman who barely gives a fuck sometimes. And she doesn't know what she's doing. Well, well what she did this time is that she didn't actually look into it. She just took one of the news articles and shared it on Twitter and called him a fascist. So she didn't even bother looking deeper than that, which is what yeah, a lot... Yeah, she, she didn't actually, like, go in and read and look at what was going on is what happened, and people pointed that out to her. In short, yeah. she reacted much like how everyone else reacted. That would be correct. Yeah. Ugh. What a crap. In other words, fuck Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I, think, I, I think we've pretty much covered all the bases as far as that's concerned. All right, so yeah. let's move uh, to the next base. Let's move on to the next one, which will be, I think, more interesting. Uh, Steam Greenlight is going to get dumped. Yep. The I kind of am in fa no, they're instituting another program, which well, I'm yes. kind of in favor of because it will cut down on the develop these developers that are purposely putting out like little trash pieces. Yeah, like they won't uh, want to spend the extra money under this new program to do that. Right. Yeah, so, so let, let me explain what the, what this is. Um, so uh, as Mosey said before, this is this is in, they're overhauling their independent uh, game uh, game acceptance system to combat the various forms of paint drying, uh, slaughter slaughtering ground style malarkey. Where it's very low budget and, and only meant to produce profits quickly. Or so what threats. is going to happen first off is that they're going to scrap any sort of uh, community uh, community voting. So you can't basically rig the votes. The developers have to fill out a form, submit their game to a compa uh, to a compatibility test, and pay a fee in order to launch their game. So they have in to other pay. Words, to they launch can't the game. launch something that doesn't work. Yeah, of course, right. they're still trying to figure out how much people need to pay to, for the game. Anywhere from $100 to 5000 Well, It probably it, it, will depend on the type of game and how big it is. It, it might also be, I, I think they might, uh, they're saying the range is a matter of uh, a case-by-case -case basis as opposed to a flat entrance fee for everyone. Well, if they are doing that, then that is good. Uh, they, you do need to... Well, how to say, take it on an individual basis, because every single game is its own beast. So, mm -hmm. Like, I say, if it's a work. tiny indie game, they might not have to pay as much, because their, you know, actual game itself isn't as big as, say, like, a triple-A game. Yeah, I could see that. 
Though I would say that this might also mean that people could try sneaking in uh, stuff other ways. I don't know, like if you uh, cite yourself as an indie developer, maybe you could get bigger benefits. I don't know. Well, it'll probably be also on a game-by-game -game basis as well. Well, yeah, I'd like and to... since you have to submit it for it to be tested... Yeah, that they means... They know whether you're trying to bypass the system or not. Hopefully. Hopefully they won't... Hopefully the system won't be as easily cheatable as uh, Greenlight. I can see why they're trashing it, though. Because they've had so many issues with it. Yeah, very understandable in, in that regard. So, hopefully this one will go better than the last time. Um, Alrighty, so next on our yeah. list is Nintendo teases hint about GameCube Virtual Console releases. There'd better be Thousand Year Door, damn it. Well, I will say this. What took them so fucking long to do this? Okay, okay, okay. With the Wii U or the uh, Wii? Okay, everyone settle down. So here's the deal. Everyone, everyone knows that the GameCube controllers are among the best controllers that were ever created, particularly the WaveBird line. Yes. So the deal is that um, part of the reason why it's so difficult to import GameCube games is because the uh, L and R triggers are pressure sensitive. And no other controller after that was. No, another controller. At least to my knowledge, even amongst the modern, amongst its predecessors, the Xbox 360 and the PS2 did not have um, si uh, did not have similar technology. Hmm. So, it, it, uh, at least to my memory, I might be wrong, but I don't remember anyone else having a controller quite like a GameCube. So, there's always been an issue about bringing them back in for for future uses. So, apparently. Uh, the deal is that in a re recent inter interview with a French uh, magazine, they said that they were working on uh, that, that they were working on things to go in a certain direction to make GameCube titles uh, playable on the virtual console. I could believe it with the new Pro controllers because I've seen what they look like. Mm -hmm. uh, the one of the things that they were t that uh, that were um, leaked or not leaked, but were hinted at in the interview was um, controller attachments onto the Joy-Con. Specifically GameCube style Joy-Con peripherals. So like a extension sort of, like they did with the 3DS. That could work. Okay. So you, you basically have to... If you take to... a look at the new Pro controllers, they are literally like almost button set up kind of like the GameCube controller already. Huh. That's interesting. Indeed, quite so. It does um, mean that we're going to have to pay for extra if we want to get the freaking uh, GameCube games. But you know what? It's a small price to pay if you get to play stuff like Thousand Year Door or any of the old classics. Though I kind of see it being sort of a moot point with some of the HD remakes already being a thing. Yeah, well, we ain't going to get a remake of Thousand Year Door, so give me that. I will yeah. give you that. Yeah, there's what the Pro Controller looks like. Uh, -huh. uh you sending us a link? Oh, yes, I just did. Okay, oh yeah, here it is. That's pretty cool. It's almost like the Wii U. It's got a little bit of the Wii U Pro Controller with some other stuff on it. It looks pretty cool. And it's Indeed. got the ergonomic grip, which means that it doesn't hurt your hands to use. It's also transparent on the top, so that's kind of weird. I'd say it's but, okay. Yeah, kind of cool. I made sure to pre-order one because those are going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They are, they are going to be absolutely right, Moose. I didn't have time um, to pre-order one, so I'm going to have to wait till later. Yep, two years. Two years. There's another thing, there's <laughs> oh, another God, thing no. I forgot to pre-order for the Switch was um, what comes in the box is kind of like a shell that you can put the Joy-Cons on to, you know, to play so you're not holding them in separate hands. Yeah. There's a version of that that you can buy that charges the Joy-Cons while you're playing. Oh, really? That's awesome. And it's only 29 bucks, so it's kind of like a recharging thing while you're playing. Hmm. That's interesting. That could be cool. I, 
I may have to do a last minute pre order on that. Provided they're still available. Mm -hmm. And how's your pre order I'm of Breath of the Wild? Hmm? How's your pre order of Breath of the Wild? Oh, I paid it off. Oh, you did pay it off. I paid off my Switch and Breath of the Wild as well. I only have $69 left on my Switch, and I need to pay off my Pro Controller, but I have all three Amiibos that I pre ordered and paid off. Um, the AC adapter that I pre ordered paid off. The game paid off. <laughs> What about the DLC? Because there's actually going to be DLC! Yes, there is. However, I'm betting you'll be able to buy this when you pick up your game. Well, we will see, but at least for the moment being, uh, you there, the, the DLC for Breath of the Wild will be via Season Pass. Yeah. So, the first... There will be three expansion passes that will be instituted the first one on March 3rd, the second one sometime in the summer, and the third and final one sometime in winter. And that one's going to be the cool one. Uh, who wants to go through the lists? Uh, why don't you go ahead and go through it, man? Because I've got it open? Yes. And because you're playing Fallout 4? Yes. I switched over. <laughs> Addict. Shut You've up. You've been called out. <laughs> Shut up. I'm playing a psycho doctor. <laughs> Shut up. I'm playing a psycho doctor with a chainsaw. My argument beats out yours. Pretty much. Okay, then. So, the first one in March 3rd, you get three new treasure chests. One found in the Great Plateau, which contains useful items and includes exclusive in-game clothing. Interesting. So you can cosplay. Wait, you're paying $20 for this? Really? Yeah. What? Yep. That yep. sounds a bit much. Yeah. Well... Technically, you're paying that price for the big stuff you get later. As well as the DLC packs, which includes uh, Cave of Trials Challenge, the hard mode, and more map. Wait, there's a hard mode? Yeah. There's a hard yeah, there mode will be. coming in the summer. Wait, 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 wait. There's a hard mode to Zelda? Yeah, and people yep. are already yep. uh, claiming that this game's already pretty damn hard already. Yeah, I heard, yeah, it's I, I, quite I, the I, hardest I, Zelda I, yet. I, I'm going to equate this to being survival mode. To Minecraft. Yeah, that's not, that. From what I've seen of people who've been able to post little bits of it, that's what it looks like. And the second DLC pack has a new original story, a new dungeon, and even more challenges. And they're only going to be asking twenty bucks for this entire package, and they're being smart and not releasing it all at once. Which I would. It's actually pretty good. That's actually one of the better season pass ideas I've heard. Fallout 4 season pass is fucking expensive. Oh yeah, but of course the thing for that is by the give it another year or two, and they're going to come out with the with the ultimate edition. Yep, that has everything. The Prepare to Die Legend of Zelda edition. <laughs> that that's what my some people might call it. That the put your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye edition. <laughs> oh no wait that's fallout <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah because of the whole nuclear stuff all right um let's go into some other interesting things so konami is trying to make a comeback with a castlevania Jeez. series on netflix which <gasps> aims, which aims yeah. to be on par with game of thrones but it's animated I am intrigued. If the animation is good, the story is good, and characters are good, and the voice acting is good, I'm down. I In other words, am all they have to that. try really hard. <laughs> they are going to I have to. This. They are going to have to uh. kiss ass, and no, they don't need. I don't want them to kiss ass. I want them to kick ass. I want them to make this thing so awesome that it will make Capcom blush. With their That's how animation going for to kiss ass. What's that? They're kissing our asses by giving us that. Well, I don't want them to kiss my ass. I want them to okay. kick ass. <laughs> All right. So to be awesome. So, who, so who's involved? Who's involved? Um, we have Adir Sh uh, Shankar, one of the producers from Dread, uh, at co-running the series. Uh, Warren Ellis of Iron Man has reportedly written the first season. Whoa. 
and Federator Studios, uh, owned by Fred Siebert, are going to be doing the animation. For those who need to re a reminder on who Fred Siebert, on who Federator Studios are, these are the people behind My Life as a Teenage Robot. Really? This may Chalk either be Chalk very Zone. good or very bad. Chalk Zone. Okay, Chalk Zone was actually not that bad. Interesting. Um, they, they also animated Fairly Odd Parents and Adventure Time. Okay, oh I now crap. support this. Okay, that's an interesting switch. <laughs> Fairly Odd Adventure and Adventure Time to Castlevania. <laughs> well... Not only that, but apparently uh, Shankar has described the show as dark and satirical, with the intention to flip the vampire subgenre on its head. No, his exact no. words. Oh, oh no, no, it's Twilight all over again. Uh, no, well, I, I don't like those words. Well, hang on. Remember that... Now, now he, that might be a bit ominous, considering the fact that apparently, according to one of the animators, they are, they are aiming this for a younger audience. Oh no. Oh no. However, we have to wonder what he whether or not the Game of Thrones uh hold is still gonna be in effect. It may be for a younger be, audience, this, but this, making it this, like Game of Thrones. That, uh, well this, this might be something along the lines of the original Teen the Teen Titans comic where or the Teen Titans cartoon, where what? it was dark and broody and emotional. But okay, still had that. elements of I love yes. Teen Titans. So we, we'll have to see on what side of the coin they planned on, because the studio also also helped uh, draw Fanboy and Chum Chum. Oh god damn it! So, I have no idea what that is. It, do I. You don't want to know. A, it's a bit of a head. It's a bit of a coin toss. It Sorry. suffice it to say that there have been some swings and hits and swings and misses. Well, given how fairly odd parents later seasons were, those were big misses. Uh, they, they are quite well. That might be a matter of stale comedy as opposed to uh, bad from the gate. Uh, bless you, whoever sneezed. That, that was me coughing. Okay. okay. So um, anyway, that's more or less what we have on that. And then, so we have the good and the bad from Castlevania. And then this is the Moe. This is the goddamn it! What are we ugly? looking at? <laughs> we uh, had the good is, and the bad. No, no, no this is the Moe <laughs> because. Kona it, it, to, to, to commemorate Super Bomberman R being released for the Nintendo Switch, there is going to be a Bomberman-inspired anime. Oh god, I heard about this. Bomber Girl. <sighs> no. It's an excuse for panty shots and oh. short skirts. Oh, the moe. <laughs> As we're getting enough of that in the high school, the day. The moe hurts here, gentle, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It just... Um, why? Okay, what? to be fair, it's not... It, okay, I misread. It's not a... It's not an anime. It's a game. But boy, does it look moe as fuck. It does. So, you will be able to play as four characters. Hero, based off the classic farmer. Momoko, um, the blocker. Oren, the high-speed attacker. And Emra, the long-range shooter who all have very traditional Moe designs. To be fair, they're saying it's going to be an arcade release as well, though, so that kind of makes sense. <laughs> you know what would baffle me? What? If the game turned out to be good. Yeah, uh, that would be rather it, baffling. It would be, but apparently losing a match will cause your Bomber Girl's clothes to shred naturally, meaning the losing team can take Hollis and seeing anime boob. Well, sounds Japanese. It sounds very, very much Japanese. <laughs> yeah. I they want to push their fingers into no. their eyes. As long as they don't have gravity defying boobs, like no, in high, high School of the Dead, we're okay. <laughs> no, nah, it, it's they, it seems to be much tamer, but boy, is it going to make you feel uncomfortable. It's I Japanese. have seen many levels of bullshit in my day. I've come off of a series that has made me go, um... you, for you, you forgot to mention that when you were watching earlier this week. Oh, God. I will not mention that though I was watching uh, earlier this week. You should have. Right, well, I'll mention chuck... it next week. Well, then how about anyway. we just chalk it up to Morbid Curiosity Strikes Again and move along. Morbid Fine. Curiosity Strikes Again and then his brain goes, ah! Fine. <laughs> um, 
The fractured butthole has been delayed again. Uh oh. Uh, yay, yay. So, yeah. what's the constipation this time? Uh, South Park delayed their game. Uh, delayed their game. Uh, now it's going to be released. Um, it's not go. Uh, come sometime before April two thousand eighteen. Oh, for the love of God! So initially, it was supposed to be released back in December of last year. It got pushed back up until the first quarter of this year. Yeah, and now they're saying that. And now they're saying that it will be released before the end of their fiscal year, which ends in April. Uh, I'd just like to ask. No, April of next year, Muzi. I'd just like to ask, uh, did this kind of thing happen to the original uh, Stick of Truth? No, I don't think so. It actually has. To to this degree? Well, their fiscal year ends, it says April 2017. The thing is, it was supposed to come out the second half of 2012. Uh, But... It would also be like, oh, we'll push it to 2013, and it got pushed again, and then it came out in March of 2014. Okay, but okay, then people so. didn't care because it was a complete game, which is what they're aiming for this time. So it, they they delivered with Stick of Truth. Okay, so it was in it. Okay, so I'm reading the. Uh, it was initially de- it was delayed several times from it was a, it was delayed a full year, is what they were saying. It, for Stick of Truth. From its initial release date. So we're not completely fucked yet, but if they keep pushing it back, it might turn out to be this way. We call right this now, it's still supposed hell. to be this year, but just a little bit later than they intended. I'd um, probably, if I had the guess, it'd probably be come out they're probably in the fall or the winter, which, honestly, that would save me a little bit of time because I have the game pre-ordered already. I, I, I would think that they would want to get it out, I think, either... They might want to. I don't know if they would want to get it out after uh, E3, as and make it a hype point for Ubisoft. But I don't know. It, I, I think part of the reason for the delay would be recent events that uh, that the that the producers wanted to go ahead and make references to in the game. Hmm. Which I would be a good idea because this is the, the time now to yeah. say, hey, we're going to be a little later than intended. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that that might be the reason for it, but I could be wrong. Oh, you uh, never know. Uh, um, At this point, we can speak. still uh, say that they have been loyal to their fans, and they haven't delayed it because of... Well, if they delayed it, they must have had a good reason to do so. We're still able to give them the benefit of the doubt. For now. Uh, they, when they brought out the first one, they brought it out as a full game because of the extra time they took. And it so was good. So if they repeat that... They should be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of release dates, we have a release date for the remastered Crash Bandicoot collection. Ooh. Yes, it will be released uh, June thirtieth at the at the dollar at the relatively fair dollar price tag of forty dollars. Which for three games is not bad. Yep. Nah. And I will they, also say this: I have never have... actually played these. Same here. Oh my god, these games are wonderful. The first one is ball clenchingly hard. But it's but it's actually pretty fun once you get the hang of it, and then it progressively just gets better. It's the second one was card, my favorite. Card if you want to one hundred percent it, from what I've heard. I beg your pardon. It's ball clenchingly hard if you want to one hundred percent it. Yes, but but now it should be a little bit easier because apparently they are re uh, updating the bonus and bonus levels and time trials as part of their overhaul, as well as giving the intro cinematic. Uh, better graphics and sound, which of course comes considering that it looks com- looks completely different from its initial debut. He'll have actual fur. Yes, he will. <laughs> so long as they don't downplay on the gameplay, I'm good. Because so, uh, some ports have been better than others. The gameplay intact. Did um have were there any uh, images in this new art style of what um? Crash's first girlfriend looks like. Oh God! I remember. Because the initial designs for her were—they literally said in the uh, in, in interviews, like we made this character based off of Pamela Anderson. They probably left her in then. <laughs> well, like she said, she she was she was always featured inside of the uh, uh, bonus trials in the original game. And even though she only makes an appearance in the first game, like she she's plastered all over the place. So it's 
would be kind of odd if they just removed her. I don't know. Companies have done weirder things. I mean, true. I'm just saying that it's it, it it's kind of it would be interesting to see considering they're doing all these graphical redesigns and everyone looks high res, so they got to do the same thing to her too. I would imagine. You'd think. Well, I would think. Yeah. Hmm. But when have game companies ever repeatedly tried to make sense? That's <laughs> very good point. Very true. All right. Speaking of things not making sense. Oh I my I'd, god. I could write segue. Cup, okay, here we go. Cup uh, ramen. So, oh. Zero, correct me if I'm wrong. Does Gladiolus have a thing for ramen? Oh, fuck he does. There's actually an entire quest dedicated to him trying to find for us killing a behemoth just so he can put behemoth meat into his cup ramen. Yes. Guess what? It gets weirder. They gave him a cat, I saw. He has uh, a full-blown uh, Dead Rising style cup of noodles hat for, yep. that you can put on Noctis' dumbass head. <laughs> and he's making the biggest what the fuck face in the picture that you have here on uh, and you can wear Polygon. That, and you can wear that while uh, fighting the final boss. Good God! Forget um, all sense of immersion! <laughs> this is so over the top and bullshit that I absolutely love it. How about the Don't one sense. where he's wearing a chocobo some mariachi outfit? That might actually be in in universe. I can believe that. The cup of ramen okay. thing, though, I think is pushing. It. Anyway, you were saying, Dan. Okay, thank you. Um, the hat in question. It, uh, is included in a code that it, it, for purchase of, of Neeson's Final Fantasy XV line of ramen. This is the 30th anniversary of uh, 30th anniversary for is it Final Fantasy 30th anniversary that they're making this for? I think so. Yeah, they're doing this for the 30th anniversary of Final Fantasy, oddly enough. Uh, they modeled several bosses of the franchise into collectible cups. Um... And In addition to collection. purchasing these specially Final Fantasy designed cups, there's also the Gigama, the uh, Ultima Weapon Fork. Which is also. based on Final Fantasy gear of the same name, but it's not an in-game item, it's a literal fork, and it's a really big one. Jesus H. Christ. This is hilarious. It's, it's uh, the size that, you know, Zero's Raichu would need to eat pancakes. Oh, shut yeah. up. Yeah, actually. Actually, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to phrase it. Uh, the DLC that we can get stateside will feature an entire mission based on Cup Noodle in Final Fantasy XV with plenty of trucks to promote the brand. <laughs> good. Although for something happy Final Fantasy you know, XV related, we will be getting that... Um, rewrite of chapter 13 toward the end of March. Okie dokie. Right. Um, there is more Final Fantasy 15 news. I, I seem to be doing all the segues here. Well, you're good uh, at your which, job. Which one would that be? Because we already covered uh, uh, our dear friend um, Saban last week. He did we now? Yeah, we did. And we did the yes. patching of the super suits? Yes. As oh, the fact that they don't... I mean, I assume, I assume they were going to get patched, but I haven't seen them yet. Well, then no, I'll just get that up. There was a super <laughs> suit thing. Okay. Yeah. The Power Rangers were going to be a thing in Final Fantasy XV. They're not oh, yeah, anymore. I forgot. We could have been forgot. Power Rangers, man. We could have been Power we Rangers. Been Power Rangers. I love being the Green Ranger. He always backstabs people. Ouch. Um, but, don't let uh, Jason David Frank hear you about that one. <laughs> Alright. Uh, last two stories for today are more are more comic and movie related. So we so I think we didn't get this we didn't have a podcast right after the um, Super Bowl, did we? This is the first time we brought it up. I think mm -hmm. so. So because why don't we go for it? So we have the the Michael Bay blockbuster, The Last Night Transformers, in which the premise is, what if Optimus Prime was bad? Uh, okay, I have to say this. 
it is perfectly okay to have characters turn heel, especially main ones. It shows a different side and a different level of what would you do in order to do the right thing, that sort of morality thing. However, such a thing must be done competently. It must be done with good writing and good character development in mind. It must be done in the most serious and direct way possible while still holding true to the original character. We're dealing with Michael fucking Bay. Who doesn't know? I'm going to see it for two reasons. One, I want a good laugh. And two, we're almost going to want to see it anyway. So, why shouldn't I have some fun going to see it? I will not stop you. And if it's good, I may actually forgive the franchise. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Although, I, I like Transformers this 1. Way, there is no more Shia LaBeouf. There is that, Dragon and there is also no more Megan Fox. Maybe. Yeah. Which is which is why I enjoyed the last one more, because there was no Megan Fox and there was no Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Meh. At the same time, I don't know. I heard a lot of bad stuff about that one. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see. It was, it was pretty bad. And if it is his last movie in this particular franchise, and like this is the last hurrah and he does good, I will be willing to watch this. And I may actually have fun doing so. I don't have the money to go after it. So I'll have I to watch. I think there's supposed to be like one more movie after this, but it won't be his. <gasps> and, and there's a spin off movie after that, before that. Yeah. But it won't be him either. That no, may it's actually Bumblebee. be. Good. And Bumblebee is awesome. That, Which I is why I get pissed off every time in the trailer for this movie when he's beating the shit out of Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> what like, did no. he do? He's just a boy. <laughs> he's funny and he's cute. <laughs> All right. Uh, last thing we have here, and this one will be more, probably more well received. Uh, Adult Swim is is commemorating the eventual release of Samurai Jack Season 5 by live-streaming the entire current series for everyone to catch up on. Yes. March 11 Which cannot come soon. Which is good, because I don't remember most of the episodes. Well, every single so, episode was, quite frankly, episodic. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. And this continual push forwards towards this... Well, really, really distant goal of getting Jack back to the past. So you could watch any one of them and not having had to see the others. Yeah, so I'm down for that. Like, the only ones I can think of that would probably be really, really tied closely together would be the first few episodes. Yeah. Where the Jack... first few episodes and then uh, maybe a couple of episodes where certain reoccurring characters pop up again. But even I then, mean, you can tell Scott what they are and who they are. <laughs> I think my favorite character is still the Scotsman. Oh, bless the Scots. Absolutely one of the best Bill characters. Bill, if they don't bring him back, I am going to be pissed. You can also find the season like, on Amazon and stuff. So. Huh. Alright, so there you go. Zero, what's coming up on the channel? Uh, let's see. Coming up on the channel, more Bloodborne episodes. Still maybe doing the Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, stuff until I get all the episodes done. Because the next few episodes for me and Legend are going to be the Chalice Dungeons. Oh, God! Please have mercy on our souls! I am... Yeah, wish me luck on that when I do that new game plus. Yeah. You're not going to have any souls left to have mercy on. Yeah. Or blood. They're, they're, they're echoes, guys. They're echoes. No, I'm, I meant their souls. I'm not going to make the joke. I've already made the joke. It's a joke. I'm not going to make it. I yeah. must not make it. I, 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 yeah. I'm holding make the back. joke! No! I cannot make the joke! Anyway, other than that, I'm going to be working on that Divide by Zero script. Hopefully, if I'm motivated enough, I can get it done within a week or so. Get motivated. You're motivated, so Zero. I, I will motivate you. Yeah. So I should play him Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> it's the thrill of the fight, damn it. Uh, yeah, Apparently, yeah. I just have to periodically whip him. 
Oh my! Because I'm invested in this too, so. <laughs> well, you'll be my editor I'm for this script I'm anyway. Game, so I can be invested in this. Yeah, you're you're going to be my editor for this script, Moozy, since I can't show it to Legend. Well, oh no. right! Crap! Because yeah, then he will snack you. I yeah. guess you have your homework set out for you, Legend. Ouch. Well, I well, it means if it means playing Berseria, I'm okay with this. I handed him the game desk; he can play it. But I'm probably not going to be able to jump on board until after Drang Lake. Aww, yeah, dude, we're playing together. No. Play it now. I'll play it when we're not playing play together. Play it after the podcast. How about that? This is Leo. <laughs> no. This is Dead Zero. This is Akari. This is Muzi. And this is someone with homework signing out. Later, guys. They're called Salt Bloodicos. Adios. <laughs> Later, guys. <laughs>